Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin's mazurkas. Today I would like to open the new opus number and it's a very special moment uh, for me uh, because this, this is the last opus number which Chopin published during his life. Why so special? <sighs> because I'm doing these videos since May, um, in this very difficult pandemic time and lockdown time and every single week uh, I managed to produce a new video about a new mazurka. Now I open the last opus, so can you imagine my feeling? Uh, when I thought about it in May I was not sure whether it will be possible for me to, to finish or not, because you know, well, six months is quite a long time. Uh, but here I am, um, still doing that and uh, ready to show you the beauty of the last opus number of Chopin's Mazurkas. Opus 63. Opus 63 was composed uh, more or less three years before uh, Chopin's death. And this, um, this period for Chopin was actually gradually worse and worse. Not only health, but also uh, many of his friends and people who he knew uh, were dying one after another. And in one of letters Chopin even uh, wrote to somebody that, oh, like something like, oh, he died, she died, he just died, everybody is dying, and I feel like I'm eternal, Chopin wrote, because it, it is a little funny, because Chopin's health was the worst from all of his other friends and people who were actually dying before him. So that's why he said, oh, I think I'm eternal despite my health problems. But of course, he definitely felt that he doesn't have a lot of time. And I personally feel it in this opus and especially in this very mazurka which I'm going to present for you today. Uh, generally speaking, all most of his pieces from this last period, because we have to call it the last period of, of his life, um, have something in common. And I found it myself. I, di I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't read it anywhere. I don't know if you agree with me, but but I think it's quite obvious. Uh, Chopin is using much more melodies and themes that he actually needs, um, because, for example, for the sonata, for the theme, the second theme, for for instance, normal a normal composer <laughs> needs only one melody or one theme. Right? If we take the sonata number three, opus 58, so that's more or less this very similar period, we can count five or even six different melodies which are all put into the second theme. It seems to me like Chopin had so much music inside his soul and inside him, and he was afraid that he will not be able to finish it. Uh, so he was kind of rushing and uh, trying to to put all of them into one place. And here in this mazurka, uh, B major, opus 63, number one, we have a kind of similar thing. Because we have much more folk melodies um, than actually one mazurka needs. He could easily compose at least three mazurkas out of these this, this, uh, motifs. Just listen. The first, we have the very, well, manly, strong in character, mazur. So the, the, the middle, middle tempo Polish dance, right? The mazur. So just listen.
different. Something like even doesn't suit in here. And then again something like from another piece. <sighs> from another mazurka, listen. And then again from another mazurka. to the beginning, which is a little different, but... is the end. So it's not very long, rather compact, but at the same time in such a short piece, which is, I don't know, three minutes long about, Chopin managed to use at least four different melodies. That's too much. That's definitely too much. And uh, some musicologists, I, I read some, some things about this opus in general and this mazurka especially, some of the musicologists uh, say that the Opus 63 brings nothing new uh, and it's, it's just uh, maybe not not boring uh, but uh, it's uh, not innovative and it's not um, particularly interesting. I even read something like this. Well, I don't agree. Uh, first of all, I found um, like in every single opus before, uh, if you follow my videos, you know that in, in every single opus I found something which this particular opus has in common. And I think maybe it's quite a good idea to, because we are in the last opus, to go through in a very short, for a very short way, to go through all the opuses and tr and explain again what is exactly this this common thing um, well uh, I said every opus but in fact almost every opus I would say because I don't consider the first two opuses opus opus six and opus seven uh, I don't consider them as um, as as a kind of that sh I, I don't think that Chopin was thinking about them as a kind of cycle and the sonata form because he was extremely young you know uh, some of these pieces the, the first mazurkas he wrote when he was only 16 even 14 or before he left Poland then when he left Poland he came to France and then he he wanted to publish some music so he what he was doing he used the pieces he wrote earlier and he put them into one big uh, opus number so he published like five mazurkas uh, or six or, or four mazurkas right opus six and seven but then all the mazurkas written abroad that we can say so starting from opus 17 has something in common in this four uh, well four or three group of opuses so in opus 17 we have the chromatic scale going down. You will find it in every single mazurka. This is the first one. This is 
is the first mazurka, and we have this oh, this this moment, for example, here. <laughs> Also later, when we have this, here, yes, no, no, uh, number two also has it, uh, number three, maybe I will not play every single because then this, this video will be too long, but just to mention uh, general general idea. In Opus 24, the general idea which puts them together is the dialogue. That, that, that we, in every mazurka, we can hear the dialogue between left hand and right hand, between a man and a woman. And it has many things in common uh, with Chopin's life at that time. Opus 30 is quite obvious. In every single Mazurka from Opus 30, we have the same, very same melody, which is firstly played uh, piano or piano pianissimo, very silent, and then immediately after forte. So it's like, like, like two thoughts, which are one, one, two, the same thought in our head, which is very silent and then very loud. It has a deeply symbolic meaning. And then in Opus. 33 in opus 33 we have the the um, how to say the use of the smallest interval we have in the music the the second the 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 second so like that this is the one note which goes up and down It, it is also you can find it in every single mazurka uh, from this opus. Okay, so that was opus 33. Oh, now opus 41. Opus 41 we have here the repeated one repeated note, usually four times. Um, four times repeated note and in every single mazurka from this opus you can find this code let's call it a code because i think it's good next opus which we have is opus opus 50 in opus 50 in every mazurka every time whenever the folk polish dance is coming it's always piano this is the code of this opus and opus 56 in opus 56 we have also something very interesting uh, we have the same melody which is presented in consecutive um, well in kind of different keys in in two or three different keys next to each other which is also something new it never happened before in any mazurka here we have it opus 59 has also a few things. Um, it is. Um, it's actually a, it, it's actually a few things which which I found here. Um, one moment, one moment, because I have to think about it. Um, Definitely, we also have the chromatic scale going, going down. I ah yes, I, I just remember now. So there were there is one very important thing for the first time in uh, in all the mazurkas. We have the um, the situation when in every mazurka there is a team in the left hand, which is exactly the same as the, the, the theme which was before presented in the right hand. Before in Chopin mazurkas he didn't really do it because um, there was like a dialogue. Here we have in every mazurka a kind of theme in the left hand which I called a theme of a father or a ghost of a father because that time his father died. And 
and th th this is definitely one thing um, w which is here. But another thing also very important is that this is this is the second code, the melody which is presented in minor and then the same very melody also in major. So we have like a two chords. And now we come to Opus 63. I'm sorry for talking so long. I hope you're still here. Uh, but I think it's very interesting. So, um, especially maybe for musicians, but, but uh, not only. So here we also have a special kind of code. Chopin is experimenting with his musical language. And he here is experimenting with what which we call in English uh, uh, su sustain, sustain chord. Su sustain chord, I think. Um, and sorry, suspended chord. I think I'm, I'm correct now. Suspended chord. And what is a suspended chord? Um, to, to make it very short, suspended chord is something which makes us um, make us wait for something. It's when we have a normal chord. It sounds normally. We have all, all the notes in the chord. When we have the suspended chord, it means that uh, the middle note from this chord is taken out and instead uh, the composer puts something else, for example, and then we are waiting, waiting, waiting for this to, to, to come. So, uh, it, it is in this opus uh, 63, we have suspended chords, but also we have suspensions in melodies. And this is extremely, extremely important. It comes in every single mazurka and quite a lot of times. In general, I think in that time Chopin was using it quite a lot. We have it in Polonaise Fantasy, we, are have, we have it in his third sonata, um, in many pieces from that period. I will show you how, how, well, I'll show you now how it's the first theme would sound if there would be no suspensions. We have, we would have. Sounds like a mazurka. I play it again. But here is a suspension. So it's completely different. And now this suspension brings us this a, a little bit of the feeling of waiting. Just listen to it slower so that you can you can absorb it easier. Suspension. 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 Suspension again. So every time when we, we it, it the, the feeling is like something is out of tune, and, uh, and 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 that's usually the suspension. All the time, all the time, and we have it also in number two and number three. I will talk about it in my next uh, episodes. Uh, so this is one thing. We have here the also the. Mm, as I said before, Mazur dance, and it's it's not so easy to play because we can't we we can't play it exactly the way it's written in the score because then it will not sound like a Polish dance. So I, I present it for you now. I play it exactly literally like it's written. <laughs> Uh, 
I sorry, maybe I should not play that ugly. But anyway, this is ugly, but not because I played it ugly, but because it simply sounds ugly. Because it's not the way it should be played. It's not the way we dance it in Poland. It's not the the way um, uh, to interpret. And now you ask me, so why Chopin wrote it this way if it's played the other way? Well, the secret is that it is almost impossible to write it exactly the way folk people dance it. Because the differences are very, very small, but fundamental. Uh, it's a question of the time, and especially in 19th century, uh, the composers, they didn't have uh, all the tools to use to write these uh, this little changes in the rhythm. Uh, so for Chopin, Chopin, in all the mazurkas, we have the same problem. But I think in this one is especially big problem, because actually in every bar we have to do something with the time. When we have all the rests, all the rests, I mean very short uh, pieces of silence, we have to extend them a little bit, make them a little bit longer. Like we. If you want to listen to a perfect Polish. Um, interpretation of this mazurka, I strongly recommend you to listen to the recording of Arthur Rubinstein, who plays this mazurka extraordinarily well. Uh, and he is exactly doing this typical folk. We can imagine a person who is jumping while dancing. And when we jump, we, have, we need a little bit more time. Because we jump, then we stay a little bit uh, up and then go down, like the gravitation works. So we have and again. This this is composed with a small short phrases. Second. Third. Fourth. Then again the same. So every phrase, when we when we open it, we should also wait a little bit. Uh, one. It's extremely difficult. Well, I try. I start. Tr uh, I, I I try to count it while playing, so that you can follow it easier. One. Two, three, one, two, three. It's extremely difficult to count and play, of, as you know, especially when it's not even. So we cannot play it with the metronome. This is the secret of, of especially this mazurka, but most of the mazurkas actually, we cannot. Um, so the first, I think the first three lines are the most difficult. Later it is easier, uh, because it's ob more obvious. But still we have some differences between pianists playing this mazurka. So let's try again. <laughs> Well, the idea is that it should be imitation of folk music. And folk musicians, they don't know music theory. They don't know exactly bars. They cannot write down the music where they play. And so for a classical composer to write it down is all as difficult as if you would like to try to write down an improvisation. Uh, almost impossible. So that's why... Uh, we have to forget about bars, forget about counting, and then just follow the melody and try to play it as understandable and beautiful as possible. As if we are singing. And then 
then we have part B. Part B is very simple. Left hand is imitating the folk group of musicians. And well, when I see this, I, I immediately think it should be played exactly even because that's how they play. Sometimes a little bit number three, the three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three can also be. Uh, mentioned before Arthur Rubinstein, he thinks a little bit differently and in this moment I don't really agree with him, but I love this recording of him, of course, but because he's slowing down a little bit every second bar. So, because we have the melody. I think for me it's the, uh, the bridge, this part is the bridge between this beautiful melody which comes next like a woman a woman in love maybe and it brings us to the dance and the bridge is a because before we had a very manly dance, so we need a bridge to connect this dance with, with the woman. So this bridge is here and we have it uh, dance in the left hand and a kind of a, like a woman in the right hand. So it, it, it puts it together. Just listen. We have this beautiful melody. So this mazurka needs a lot of interpretation. Uh, it is very demanding. Mm. So, as I said before, the bridge when we have rather simple construction. Only in these long notes, I think, it's good to wait a little bit, but without making a ritardando, just do this typical Polish folk rhythm, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, I count for you now so that you know what I'm talking about. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. You can exaggerate if you are a pianist and you play this piece. You can exaggerate if you want, you can exaggerate less, you can do it very small, but I think you should do, I mean, we should do something about it, but not too much, because left hand is constantly playing the, 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 the chords. So not only left, also right. <laughs> I don't think it should be played um, as a kind of beautiful melody. Even though it, it is a beautiful melody, but left hand has something other accompaniment. And also, as I said before, in my opinion, of course, it's a bridge. So it has to have something in common with, um, with like one end of the bridge and the second end, right? So with the dance, with this. which is very folk, we can easily hear. There is one very interesting moment in this part. Chopin <laughs> delete one and two in accompaniment. Usually we always had one, two, three, one, two, three. Here we don't have one and two. I don't know if you noticed that, but... It's 
extremely funny, don't you think so? If you want to clap your hands, you clap your hands only on three. So we have one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And then the last two, the last three actually, we have two and three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is a kind of uh, imitation of the play, the, the, the a kind of maybe wedding play or the play in the party when a group of people are just having fun. So they are clapping, maybe they're clapping, maybe they are shouting, or maybe just a group of, of players is playing, but only on three, and somebody is singing, or the violinist is playing. Also, the way how Chopin is making slurs, I mean, is showing us the way how to phrase this part is very special because we have extremely short phrases. For me, it is almost like Chopin is trying to say there are these are two people or more people who are singing. First person, second, third, fourth, third. Every time different, and this. One two three, 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 one two three. Just listen to this fantastic fun. Three. One two three, one two three, one two three, one two three. The same, but here another person, like an echo or a woman, is answering. So, and now, and again. And again, and again, and again, and again. So that's the idea of this part. A lot of fun and uh, kind of play. Play with the dance, with the music. Let's listen again. And here the man, a bass. This is the, the, the bass, bass player who has a solo. And it's very interesting because he is showing us his, his capability of improvising. So... And then the same, but with one note more, then... Six notes, and then... And then again the the, uh, the phrase number two, and it, it it's being repeated. One, two, three. We will hear it actually four times, and then we come back to the beginning. So it's like a a way of the bassist is trying to, has a solo, and after that we come back to the beginning. So let's just listen. Second. to the beginning but there is something funny also here uh, when we come back um, because the the bass is playing all the time the same notes it's almost a little bit well I'm joking now but as if after this solo he's so tired that he is just playing the same note all the time he doesn't want to play any other note and so, whereas all the other group is playing the mazur And now here it should be and then the bridge, but we don't need the bridge anymore because we just go to the beginning, the, the, to the end of the piece. So instead of the bridge, we have repeated two times the same phrase with the dance like rhythm. Yeah. Chopin is, Chopin is like Beethoven a little bit. He's 
playing with the motif, with a short motif, he takes out the motif and makes a kind of transition using this very motif. I, I think it's very easily uh, to, I mean, you, you, can, you can hear it easily, just listen. Second time. Third, and now. Nothing new, and then. Here, something, something is being born, I would say. We heard it before a little bit here. So I think for Chopin, he was very proud of this melody, I think. He was extremely proud, he loved it. He said, oh, it's such a fantastic melody I composed. So why, why, why not using it at the end? So he wants to use it at the end. Um, to close the mazurka with this melody. So he's, we are approaching this melody. And then the everything ends boom, boom, to boom, boom, just to end the mazurka. Anyway, uh, it's also a challenge for the performer um, to smoothly connect everything with this ending melody. So as if the listener can f can hear that some that oh the, it's approaching. Listen. A little bit like we don't know when suddenly we are oh we are in this dance. But it's only it's not it's not dance like anymore. It's only a kind of memory of the dance. So Let's let's play it again and just to as a conclusion of everything. We start with the mazur, with the, and with many sus, sus, suspensions, suspended chords. The play, folk play. And then the bass. enjoyed this very well funny mazurka i would say and i invite you to my next episode when we will talk about mazurka which is completely different and very very sad see you next week bye bye thank you